she did dare to try and get me out of the club. <laughs> God, thank you for delivering me. I'm delivering y'all. everyone welcome back to the brickering my name is Kanisha brickering my hubby is not here my children are not here but Elisha is she's there um, eating her apple and chilling um, playing with her toys and occupied um, which is great so today today I've decided to sit down with you all and do a story I'm really excited today. Today has been a good day. Um, I'm not normally a morning person, you know, and all this started from uni days. You know, uni brought me to a very bad habit. And um, I went through a phase where, a long phase, it's been a couple of years where sleeping at night is quite difficult for me, but I'm I'm getting better, I'm getting better but anyways today i'm talking about being a teen mom and um how did that come about um yeah so today i'm talking about being a teen mom and um all that i endured and learned being close to an airport um, all that I've learned um, through that experience so um, if you don't know today you'll find out um, I was quite a misfit I was a very I don't think that as a child I was rude but um, somewhere in my life I believe from 13 onwards um i just went completely off rail um completely completely off track and i was more into fighting um i wouldn't say boys but i did i did enjoy my boyfriends every now and then um and uh, partying yeah i was very much into partying clubbing you're probably thinking ken why are you clubbing so young um I, I would be in the club and buck my mom in the club. Like, seriously. I'll be in the same club with my mom. Obviously, my mom. Um, Elisha, say hello. Say hello. Hello. Wait, say hello. Kiss. 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 Okay. No kisses. So, I will buck my mom in the same club, y'all. I would um, shamefully do that and um, probably if she did dare to try and get me out of the club. <laughs> God, thank you for delivering me. I'm delivering. Um, as a teenager, at the age of 16, I was a runaway child. Um, went through juvenile home for fighting. I just end up there. I shouldn't have been there, but I end up there. So basically, and it's crazy. This this one is crazy. Maybe I should have been there when I think about it. Uh, when I think about it, because uh, me and my twin sister ended up in a fight. Uh, ended up in a fight. And um, police came, but they only wanted my twin sister. So... Um, they gave me the option. So they gave me the option to either go back to, at the time I was staying at a friend's house, go back to her house, nothing's done with me, or take a ride with my twin sister. Obviously, I chose the stupid decision and <laughs> took a ride in the police car with my twin sister, ended up in juvenile home. Um, but, um, my life kind of just went down spiral and uh, i don't know if at the time while i was in it if i realized that i was going downwards um so by the time of 16 i ran away from my island i uh my both my parents are jamaicans 
I was born on the Cayman Islands and I was raised um, partially on the Cayman in partially on the Cayman Islands, partially in Jamaica, partially um, in America. So my mom never stood still. I never really understood why my mom never stood still um, for a long period of time. Um, as I grew old, I think after I was 24, 25, um, she explained to me that she didn't have the legal right to stay on the Cayman Islands as yet. And so she could not have stayed there for a long period of time. So there was times where she could not have taken us with her. So she had to leave us um, for like a few months um, with other people just to leave for a while and then come back. So um, as a child, I didn't really understand. I understood why my mom would go missing for a long period of time and why we always had different people with us um but um as a adult and she explained these things to me i get it um i think my mom is still in well, let's not get in there anyways by the age of 16 i ran away from my island because i was just going through a lot of stuff um some lovely people took me in and i just couldn't understand their love for me and, Okay. So I couldn't understand why they showed me so much love. I've never really experienced that love and I felt very undeserving of their love. So I planned to run away from the island and even though at that time I was living in a stable home, but if you put an unstable person in a stable home, doesn't mean that they're stable. Even that I was finding love. I think if I, if I stayed there longer, maybe I would have come out of that phase and that mentality that I was in. But um, I just felt very undeserving of their love. And I ran away to America. Now, there was a time where teenage pregnancy was like this big thing like it was a huge thing you know teenage pregnancy it was like a big big thing it was blowing up and I remember I used to see quite a lot and I used to be like that that would never be me you know I used to say that would never happen to me and I, I really believe that I really believe that teenage pregnancy would never happen to me. Yes, I used to go to the sex educated classes. Um, I, I don't know if I was too young at the time or mentally very young. It just wasn't clicking to me. I, I didn't get it. I didn't understand it. And so um, anyways, it is literally, I think a few days after my 18th birthday. And I, at the time, I'm living in this uh, very small room that I was so grateful for because I've gotten kicked out of how much people houses by this time. Um, and I am working from, I'm a dropout of um, school. I just did not like school in America. I did not, I did not get it. I did not understand it. I did not like it. So school in America for me, especially being in Bronx, New York, um, the children just did not respect the, the teachers. Yeah, the children just did not respect the teachers and um, you be in class and you, the, they're doing whatever they wanna do. And the teachers for me, what I've experienced just did not care. Um, so, and I didn't, I didn't get it. I just, I didn't get it. I end up dropping out of school and uh, working from, I would say six in the morning till one in the morning. So I was working at an ice cream factory, six to six. And then from there, uh, the person that I worked for, he owned both of the companies. So from there, I'll literally like take like 20 steps and I'll be in a deli. So like a restaurant. 
um and uh, i'll be the cashier there um and that's what i was doing about one day <laughs> <laughs> leave, leave the camera. You're loving yourself, isn't it? Hey, hey, hey. Your puff puff. Yeah, you're showing them your hair. Wow, beautiful. Don't pop it now, mama. So anyways, um, one day, ah, I was at work the ice cream factory and I just didn't feel well I didn't feel well at all I feel well at all and um I wish I love like I love working there because I would just after I made the ice cream you learned how to make how to make a soya ice cream normal ice cream and whenever the ice cream will set I would love to just go and taste all of them. And this day, I was trying soya ice cream for the first time. I think it was soya peach ice cream. And it was so lovely. But as soon as I took it on my mouth, in my mouth, I just remember running, running, and it came up. I was like, okay, I'm not feeling well today. So I asked to go home. Anyways, um, the vomiting just did not stop. And there, like, if anyone told me, even at that time that I was pregnant, I'd be like, no, I'm not pregnant. Okay, I did. That did not cross my mind. Pregnancy did not cross my mind at all. Um, anyways, I thought that I, I ate something that um, upset me. But the vomiting kept coming every day. And so eventually I ended up um, going to the hospital to get checked. Now, bear in mind, y'all, that like I am not expecting to hear that I'm pregnant. Like, it, I'm not expecting this at all. At all. I'm not expecting this. And, um... At the time, my baby daddy slash partner is with me and our relationship is messed up, okay? It is messed up. Like, when I even think back now, like, like, what? What was I thinking? Okay, that is where I'm at. When I think on the relationship like oh my gosh i gotta do a video on this when i think about it i'm like what can what but then obviously i just didn't know any better because i i grew up seeing violent relationships that's what i know that was my normality but what like they just in this relationship it was just mad it was mad crazy you know it was crazy and then you feel so in love and you don't realize that kenisha my dear sweetheart <laughs> let me sit you down two minutes right now and let you know this is not love this is not love you know when you're going through physical mental emotional hits you know and you still think that you're in love and i think that for a long time when i think about it for a very long time i've been a broken person and uh, way before i was 18 i've been broken and it's only the ugly fly in here Get out. It's only when I got to 24 that I acknowledge where, where, well, my brokenness got to a place where I could not miss it. And I had to acknowledge that something was wrong with me. 
and that's when I found myself absolutely depressed but this this topic's hitting a lot of stuff but um, we're not gonna get into that maybe that's another time I found myself depressed but let's not get it there anyways partner was is with me at the time believe it or not we're fighting because he wants my phone to message his other women or ladies or his females his other females and i don't want to give him my phone i just got i just worked hard for this new flip up phone like like this nice phone and i think i gave it to someone before i came here i gave it to a good friend before i came here i pray to god it was a good friend and not him um but um at the time he's fighting me for my phone to message his things his his females okay to sit down in a room with him find out i'm pregnant and still leave that room where he's telling me like no doubt about it no thinking about it you're gonna get rid of this baby and give me your phone so i can message what i need a message you know um i don't know if it sunk in right away i don't think it did and I just want to put this out here, you know, like today I'm 29, okay? I'm not 13, I'm not 18, I'm not a child. I'm 29 years old, I'm hitting the big 30 in a couple of months, you know, and um, I was still a child, like I was still a baby. Matter of fact, I don't think like, even though I was 18, maturity wise i was i wasn't even 16. like when i look back at my life i was still stuck in that 13 year old mindset 13 year old girl you know that went through so much you know i was still stuck there but i thought that i was grown but i wasn't grown i was still a child I was still a child and um I think I I was I was very childish until 24. 24 was like I had a massive growth spout like went to depression to growth sprout. So I was I started growing again at 24. Um anyways, let's continue. I find out I was pregnant. I knew right away that I was not gonna have an abortion. I don't know for some reason, from I was in school on the Cayman Islands and we used to go to these sex education classes and they used to bring up abortion. I would always say I would never have an abortion. And I'm gonna do abortion videos because there were two times where, uh, I think I ended up in an abortion clinic four times. We'll get into that later in another video. Um, but anyways, um, I leave this hospital, I'm 18, just a few days, 18 y'all, and I'm finding out I'm pregnant, I'm in America, I live in a little bedroom with this abusive partner, um, with no one, like literally, um, I thank God for my boss, he, be, he was to me like a someone who took me in and treated me like a human you know he didn't treat me like a body or like you know someone who wants something from me he treated me like a human being you know and he he took me out of a lot of mess that i found myself in um and i hope to one day see him i pray that god would never take him until I get to see him and thank him and bless his life. But um, anyways, I'm 18, I'm pregnant. I have a abusive partner in a small room um, making God knows how much. Um, uh, how much was I making? I don't know if it was 400 a week or a month. Um, but I work quite hard, so 400 a week is not bad, but it was not much either. Uh, I had another friend who would give me money as well. So I had another friend who would give me money. However, um, 
I felt like he wanted more from me and I I just wasn't into all that, you know. I just saw him as a friend. He was a lovely person. Guys, please do not mind this thing shaking. Like Elisha is literally like whenever I'm doing video and this is shaking, Elisha is around y'all. Uh oh. So anyways, um the first thing that I did, I contacted my twin sister and I told her I was very um, scared. I'm not too sure what I was more scared of. Um, like, to be honest, my mother opinions never really faced me. But one thing that I feared for, for a long time in my life was making the same mistakes that my mom made. I... I just really feared um I it was a big Auntie. real fear for me um making the mistakes that my mom made and for me that was the beginning of um making the same mistakes like my mom and uh, anyways I told my twin sister and my twin sister ended up calling my mother pretending that she's pregnant just to see how my mom react. My mom react very badly to her being pregnant. Then when she said, oh, well, this is the story I heard. I've not gotten confirmation. But then when she told my mom that it was me, my mom was like, expected isn't it um the it's crazy because i remember being like 14 15 and one of my mom friends said like with a lot of us around you'll be the first one to get pregnant in this family um and you're gonna like she's telling me that i'm gonna get pregnant young and remember my child uh, but she either foresee saw it or just um said it over my life i don't know anyways i ended up running away from america to the uk and that is how i ended up in the uk was never planned was never part of my many bad choices um but i ended up here and I'm grateful that I did because I, I, what's the word? I was able to do a lot of things that I would have not been able to do if I was in America. And I think taking me away from America was very good because I believe for me to have left that abusive relationship, I had to literally leave the, the, wherever that guy was i could not be there because we were like bombs but magnets i don't know if that makes sense like we were bombs but magnets and whenever we we came together they were gonna be a, a big explosion you know but um i came here i decided to keep the baby and I felt very protective over um, over the baby way before she was even, you know, a couple of months. I felt so protective over her. And um, I, I called her my angel and I wanted to call, name her angel, but I didn't name her angel. I did not name her angel i should have um one day maybe she'll allow me to change her name um but uh, to be honest if i can change any of my children's name it will be all three of my first children i'll change their names and i'll probably make a video of what i would have called them um now autumn autumn loved the name sarah um, but I'll probably call her Angel, Sarah, and I'll leave the Sandra because I'm a Sandra. Um, 
Zalea. So Autumn, Sarah, Sandra, Zalea. I'll still leave Shyla as, as a Shyla, um, but I'll give him uh, his second name. I'll probably be like a Shiloh Solomon um, or a Shiloh, um, a Shiloh Wise. Yeah, Shiloh Wise. And um, Akai, Akai. I, I wanted to call Kai Cephas. That's the name that I wanted to call Kai, a Cephas. So I'll probably, I, I, I've grown to love the name Kai, Akai, but um, I named him Akai Angel because I wanted to name him Akai Angel separate, but he's Akai Angel together because, <laughs> listen to me, if you want to name your child, do not let anyone name your child but you, and if you are married, your husband. No one else. Um, and make the names that you are happy with. Okay. But anyways, um, I ended up in the UK 2007. And um, I watched. Listen. You can take a broken person from a country to another country. They're still broken. All the crazy stuff that I went through in my island, went through in America, I came to the UK and I went through some more crazy stuff, but that's for another video. But anyways, guess what? Out of all my troubles, I ended up being a teen mom again. Like, literally. I had a baby at 18, I had another one at 19. Um, we'll get into that in another video. But what I'm saying, I'm just gonna end this video here. I, I just wanna be, have, Oh, this is long. Okay. I don't want to get to 30 minutes. Okay. What I want to say is that one thing changed my life. Okay. One, one thing. What changed my life and my perception? My perception on life was surrendering to my creator. I surrendered my life to God. And from then, everything about my life changed. And I'm going to continue this i'm gonna make it into a series okay this is a series i'm just gonna think of a name but um for, i'm gonna call it um from death to life yeah from death to life anyways i'm gonna end this video right here and i'm gonna continue story time with y'all um on my journey to where i'm at now i'll get in debt with some stuff but for now, let's end this here. Um, we'll continue and talk about teen pregnancy. Became a teen pregnancy twice. Anyways, like, share, subscribe.